Welcome back to the Crypto Bot Channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now, this indicator on the Bitcoin charts is getting very close to flashing another historic Bitcoin bottom signal, but it is not there just yet. So I'll be talking about that in just a moment alongside the short-term Bitcoin and Ethereum charts because we have some new developments showing in the shorter term, which will be important to pay attention to. So definitely stick around to the end of this video so that you don't miss out on any of this important information. Just starting off on this weekly Bitcoin chart, and we have this indicator just here, which is known as the Pi Cycle Bottom Indicator, pretty much the opposite of the Pi Cycle Top Indicator. And I covered the Pi Cycle Top Indicator over a year ago, which actually predicted this top at around 65,000. And the Pi Cycle Top also perfectly predicted the 2017 bull market top, the 2013 bull market top. But this indicator, on the other hand, is once again known as the Pi Cycle Bottom Indicator. It's made up of two moving averages like the Pi Cycle Top. But these two moving averages in particular, when we see the red line cross underneath the green line, we see the Pi Cycle bottom indicator flash this bottom signal. And this signal has pretty much perfectly predicted the bottom of the last two significant Bitcoin bear markets back in 2014 and 2018. In fact, if you zoom into the 2014 Bitcoin bear market, which was this bear market right here on screen, as soon as these two moving averages crossed over, we only had one more week to go before we actually bottomed out for the Bitcoin bear market at the end of 2014, entering into early 2015. And if you're looking at the 2018 bear market, this also predicted the exact Bitcoin bottom. In fact, this time the cross wasn't even a week early. We saw the crossover in these two moving averages, the red line going underneath the green line once again, on the exact weekly candle where we saw the bottom for the Bitcoin bear market at the end of the 2018 bear market. And if you're looking at the present day, these two moving averages are extremely close to crossing over, but they're not there just yet. So keep that in mind. And what this means for Bitcoin is technically speaking, we still have a little while longer, maybe a few more weeks, maybe around a month, judging on how close these moving averages are, before we start beginning that bottoming out phase, whether we form a significant lower low or a slight lower low, or even just revisit that initial $17,500 low. But either way, according to this indicator right here, which has been correct the two other significant Bitcoin bear markets, we could still have perhaps a few more weeks before we really bottom out for this Bitcoin bear market based on previous cycles. And if you take a look at this Bitcoin chart, this shows a very similar thing between two lines basically crossing over that normally cross over at the bottom of the Bitcoin bear market. But this chart, on the other hand, these indicators are actually built from Bitcoin's on-chain metrics. But on that other chart with the Pi Cycle bottom indicator, once again, that indicator is derived from moving averages and moving averages are derived from the Bitcoin price, not Bitcoin's on-chain metrics like this chart is. So what this means is there's actually two complete completely separate ways to calculate these two charts that I've shared so far in this video. And yet both of these Bitcoin charts, this on-chain Bitcoin chart and that Pi Cycle bottom indicator have been extremely accurate at predicting previous bear market bottoms, specifically the 2014 bear market bottom and the 2018 bear market bottom. And if you're zooming into the current Bitcoin price action around these two on-chain metrics, right now these two lines are coming into play at just above 17,000 and just below 17,000 respectively. And once again, we're getting a lot closer to seeing these two lines cross over, which normally happens at the bottom of a Bitcoin bear market, according to the last two significant Bitcoin bear markets. But because these two lines haven't crossed over, at least as of right now, it's suggesting that we might be close to a Bitcoin bear market bottom, but we're not there just yet. We could have a little lower to go, according to these two significant charts. Now, if you're taking a look at the 12-hour Bitcoin chart, technically speaking, we're still seeing this bullish divergence play out, and that bullish cross that we saw a while ago in the Bitcoin macro D on the 12 hour time frame still play out as well with this short term bullish momentum. But when you're zooming in even further into the four hour Bitcoin chart, this on the other hand actually shows this short term bullish momentum is slowly beginning to fade away. If you're looking at the RSI and the MACD on the four hour chart, we're starting to see the four hour Bitcoin RSI flatten out and actually form horizontal highs while the Bitcoin price formed higher highs. And technically speaking, that is a form of bearish divergence, but it is weaker than a regular bearish divergence because we do not have lower highs in the 4-hour Bitcoin RSI, at least as of right now. But if you're looking at the histogram within the MACD indicator, this histogram is slowly declining while the price action is slowly climbing. And if you're looking at the last time that happened, that was around the 20 to 21st of June. As you can see, the histogram in the 4-hour Bitcoin MACD was beginning to decline right around here as the Bitcoin 
trading price was still slowly rising, but this was showing a loss in that short-term bullish momentum. And what came next was simply a short-term pullback that lasted for around one to two days. So with that in mind, it is entirely possible we could be due for some sort of short-term pullback potentially in the coming days, especially if we see a continued rejection from around 21.7K, which is acting as major resistance. And obviously we do have a rising wedge pattern on the four hour Bitcoin chart, which is typically a bearish pattern, which means more often than not, it does end up breaking to the downside. And right now at the time of recording this video, the Bitcoin price is making an attempt of breaking to the downside, but we don't have a lot of confirmation as of right now. We have one four hour candle close. But if you want to see even more confirmation, what I'll be looking out for is a potential break of these previous lows coming into play at around 20.8K. And other than that, I'll be looking at spikes in volume as we're breaking to the downside below those significant levels in the short term and also a possible retest of around 21.6 to 21.7k if we break into new higher highs and the RSI also makes higher highs then that would essentially invalidate this break to the downside. So basically to sum up this four hour Bitcoin chart we don't currently have a lot of confirmation or a lot of momentum to really either direction the RSI once again is pretty flat and the MACD is declining. So when it comes to this four hour Bitcoin chart in particular I'd like to see the price action mature to actually see some more confirmation coming in. And while we're looking at the four hour Bitcoin chart, taking a look at this four hour Bitcoin chart, which of course shows that inverse header trotters pattern, which has already confirmed a breakout to the upside with a successful retest. So technically speaking, this pattern right here does have more confirmation for the breakout to the upside than this pattern has for the break to the downside, which means technically speaking in the somewhat shorter term, we're slightly more bullish than bearish. But like I said, in the price oscillators, we're losing some of that short term bullish momentum, which is mostly why we're seeing a lot of sideways price action in the somewhat shorter term. But I'll be paying close attention to this neckline for the inverse head and shoulders pattern, which is currently coming into play at around 20,700, which is once again, very close to that 20.8K level that I just mentioned. Because basically, if we break back below that level, we'll be setting in some new lower lows in the immediate short term price action. So the short term trend will start becoming more bearish. And also seeing a confirmed break back below the neckline would invalidate the inverse head and shoulders pattern altogether, leaving only the bearish rising wedge pattern remaining. So once again, even though we are lacking in bullish momentum in the shorter term, we have not seen the bearish scenario fully confirm, at least as of right now, in the somewhat shorter term for Bitcoin. And if you want to know my Bitcoin price targets based on the patterns that I've just mentioned, check out some of my recent videos that I've posted over the past few days, because in those videos, I shared my Bitcoin price targets for this these patterns. And now getting into the Ethereum parts of this video, and obviously things are very similar for Ethereum against the US dollar as they are for Bitcoin against the US dollar, especially right here on the 12 hour Ethereum chart. We're still seeing reduced bearish momentum after that bullish divergence and that bullish cross in the 12 hour Bitcoin MACD. And if you zoom in even further into the four hour Ethereum to US dollar chart, technically speaking, as of recording this video, the short term trend for Ethereum on this four hour time frame is a bullish trend because we're making higher lows and higher highs. Of course, the larger trend on the daily or the weekly chart, for example, is obviously still a bearish trend, but this is just talking about the short term. But even though this bullish inverse head and shoulders pattern is technically still in play and we're technically still in that short term bullish trend that has not been broken as of right now, we are showing signs of losing some of that short term bullish momentum as seen on this chart, especially in the price oscillators. The RSI, for example, has actually formed slightly lower highs while the price action has formed higher highs. And this is even more visible on slightly lower timeframes like the two hour Bitcoin chart revealing a short term bearish divergence for Ethereum against the US dollar. And we're also seeing a decline in the histogram within the four hour Ethereum MACD as the MACD indicator itself is approaching a short term bearish cross like what we saw back here during this short term correction for Ethereum, which is revealing we could be due for some sort of short term pullback for Ethereum within the next few days or so based on the price oscillators alone. But once again, even though we do have signs of that short term bullish momentum beginning to fade away. We haven't confirmed the bearish scenario as of right now. We're still holding above these important levels. For example, we have a level coming in at around 1.2K, which we need to hold above. Because if Ethereum confirms a break back below 1.2K, specifically this previous low coming in at around 1180, then that would confirm the short term bearish scenario, which will basically be a short term pullback at least over the next one to two days, like what we saw back here. But the technical price target for this rising wedge pattern 
is even lower than that previous low, which is sitting at around 1,050. And once again, if you want to know the price target for this pattern, check out my recent videos on the channel over the past few days. And as for levels of resistance to pay attention to, we do have significant short-term resistance for Ethereum coming into play at around 1270 to 1280. And if you want to take advantage of these short-term movements for Ethereum, Bitcoin, and many other altcoins, check out this video popping up right here on your screen if you want to know how to keep making money, even if prices are going down. But anyway, that is everything that I have to say for today. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video.